Good morning, good evening, good afternoon. <clears throat> Thanks for joining everybody. We're uh, we're pretty excited to be here. We're going to do something pretty fun. We're going to talk about ruckus at home, which is if you have any type of access point or 7150 in your house, it's a good opportunity to come in and kind of see some different things you can do with it. Uh, we're going to we're going to cover a lot of stuff. We're going to show you some pretty cool stuff that we have built. And we have the ability to show you everything. We can show you the mobile app. We can show you the Unleashed app, uh, or they're the same thing, but we can also show you the web UI. We can show you the hardware. And one thing that's gonna make this really fun is one of my really, really good friends, Brian Stewart's here, and he is actually going to be participating. And we're gonna go through this and do a lot of really cool stuff and show you some different things. So Brian, thanks for being here. It's great to have you absolutely good to be here good to see you how you doing i'm doing great man i'm uh like i said i'm pretty excited about this um we're gonna go through a lot of different scenarios here and and cover a lot of stuff so you know i think the main thing that we really want to kind of communicate to everybody is ask questions don't be afraid to ask us to show you something don't be afraid to ask us to answer really whacked out questions as well so we're going to go through and show you a lot of this stuff. And we understand that as, as homeowners, you're probably dealing with this stuff in a little bit of a different way. And, you know, if you're super nerds like Brian and I, you probably handle this stuff in a little bit different way. Um, but we're going to try and simplify it as much as possible and, and make it really simple and really easy for you. So I think the first thing I'm going to do is I'm just going to hop into the AP. Oh, okay. <laughs> it works the second time. <laughs> so we have an actual unleashed um, R510 here in the office, and we're going to work off of it. And, you know, we'll show you different things you can do with it. And we'll really kind of show you the fun stuff that you can do and how you can really kind of turn your home network into something a little bit more, you know, robust and, and functional for what you're doing at home. So. Brian, what do you think? You want to add anything on top of that? Yeah, and I think one of the big things is, you know, a lot of times it's like, well, it's a lot of the equipment is made for, you know, enterprise. It's made for, you know, large venues. It's made for things like that. But, you know, we make the the antennas in our devices are the best in the industry. Mm -hmm. You know, we make exceptional switches. We make everything across the board. And so that adapts very well to a home environment, you know, that I've been using ruckus ap's at home for over three years now and for example like as far as like needing to reset an ap or something like that i th think i've done it twice in three years <laughs> maybe you know um and the the coverage is just exceptional you know so i mean it's a, it's a huge difference going from kind of your traditional off the shelf something you would buy at a big box store you know to moving into higher end gear in use in a home and that's whether it comes with Lennar, which is one of the areas of focus here or whether you've just decided to do that there's also you know there's been a little bit of a kind of interest in kind of a ruckus work from home as well you know which is a little bit of a different scenario than what we're looking at today mm -hmm. um because that would actually have your ap connect back to your corporate environment where you're also using ruckus ap's so it would always be tunneled through a vpn to your work environment and there would be no difference whether you're at the office or at the house you yeah. know so that's not necessarily our focus today but you know it's going to leverage a lot of those same equipment and same capabilities and here we're, here we're going to be looking more at the kind of more of a consumer side by looking at it running unleashed looking at it in some different scenarios so yep yeah and the the level of wi-fi that you're going to get and connectivity that you're going to get through your house is really a, a step above and beyond what you could normally get in i guess what we would call a consumer grade product right yeah and we talked about this on the first episode of the podcast just talking about beam flex and beam forming i mean if you're there's some links in chat obviously if if you haven't listened to that you should give it a listen brian does a great job of of really elaborating how that stuff works and what really makes it tick so it's, it's really cool to see um so just to kind of give you a little bit of a preview, I'm going to show you we do have the hardware here. So if you have a question about what to use, what not to use, what to allow, throw the question in the chat here. I'll show you some different stuff on this in a little bit. Uh, but right now, I think 
we'll just kind of go through and I'll show you some different things within the actual web interface of it. So you can manage this in one of two ways. So whatever we do here, I will show you what you can do uh, in the mobile app as well, because I know, you know, you're at home, kind of chilling on the couch. You don't want to get your laptop out and deal with that because your phone's right there. So, um, yeah. So, Brian, we talked yesterday about, you know, just kind of walking through some of this and what some of the uh, questions would be that would come into your mind if you were getting ready to set this up at home. Uh, so if you have if you have anything that you really want to kind of ask and go through. Somebody's saying I'm breaking up. Let me know if that audio level's better. I just turned my my volume down a little bit. So, um, but yeah, let's, uh, let's go through it. So if you were looking at this first time, you know, you got it, you started to unpack it. What's, what's the first question that would come to your mind and say, Hey, what do, what do I need to do to really make the use the most use out of this? And the first things I would of course need is like, okay, if I'm in my IP, how am I going to set up my own home network? How do I set up like a, a guest network? You know, maybe I've got, you know, I'm done. I just moved into my house. You know, that's the reason I just deployed <laughs> this new Wi-Fi, so I'm going to do, you know, a barbecue, invite over all my new neighbors, all that kind of stuff. I don't want to give them access to my network, you know, forever. Um, I don't want them always sitting out on the lawn, you know, browsing Facebook because my Wi-Fi is so much better than they have at home because I'm using ruckus <laughs> in the house. Um, or, well, I'm using ruckus in the house, so they can probably connect to it three doors down. You know, mine... I can go probably about 200 meters out from my house and still have a connection. So, you know, it's like, okay, I want to set up something that I have some control of from a guest perspective. You know, how am I going to go about doing that? I think that would be one of the first things I'd be taking a look at. So, all right. So let's, let's start from the ground floor, right? So we have Wi-Fi networks in here. We have one built and I just named it ruckus at home. Okay. This would be your main Wi-Fi networks. So when we talk about Wi-Fi networks, especially at home, you have two different terms that get thrown around. One is wireless LAN, one is SSID. We also refer to them as WLAN. So just for clarity's sake, WLAN and SSID in, in this scenario is the exact same thing. Your SSID and your WLAN is the wireless network name that's broadcast out that you connect to. Use your password to connect to it. And you're good so we have that built this is ours we use it at home like you said you don't want your neighbors attaching to it all the time so let's create a guest network whether you're having a barbecue whether you're having a super bowl party whether it's book club whatever it might be let's create one so if we go up here to under wi-fi networks and we just go to create okay we're going to call this at home guest just for fun okay and then we're going to select the guest access radio button this is going to open up a bunch of different options that we can go through and we can pick and choose what we want to do with it, depending on how in depth you want to get with this. But for us, we're probably going to keep it pretty simple. So you can do guest pass and social login. You can do a social login only, or you can do none. The key with this is I can't demonstrate social logins because I'm one of the few people that doesn't have any social media presence. Um, but you can use that so people can use their Facebook to connect to it. And I'll show you this. It'll pop up. Uh, you can use a unique password for each guest if you really want to get into a, a granular level of detail with that. Um, I like things simple, so I would probably use just a single shared password to say, hey, this is the guest network. This is the password. You could print something out on a piece of paper, throw it up. Everybody can grab onto it. Um, so at home password, don't use this is a model or an example because you know people could break into it. Authentication method is open. That just basically means that anybody can connect to it. Um, but for an encryption method, we're going to use WPA2. So what that means is if you have a bad actor or somebody that is running around with a Wi-Fi analyzer or some kind of packet capture device, right? They can pull the wireless traffic going back and forth between the client and between the access point so they can see what's going on. So if you send a username and a password and for some reason it's in clear text, or if they send it and they can reverse engineer it, they now have your account information. So we want to encrypt the traffic that is going from our device to our access point. That just gives us a sense of security. So we'll use a password for that and we'll call it um, at home guest again. And then you can show the password 
Make sure you don't have typos. Make sure everything's right. Okay. You with me so far? All right. So let's look at some advanced options here. So the advanced options we have is you can do some restricted subnet access if you want. You know, a lot of times this is going to be for more, for larger environments. Uh, you know, this, this might play at home if you're somebody like myself who has multiple subnets within their house. Most homeowners don't, so you probably don't need to worry about that um, unless you have anything you really want to protect. And if you have an environment set up like that, we can probably go through that quite a bit. Um, the hide SSID, so what this is, is it will, the access point typically broadcasts out the name. So it's saying at home guest, at home guest, it's here if you want to connect to it. This will hide it. So you have to know the network name and you have to manually enter it on your device to connect to it. Um, you can choose that if you want to. It you know it gives people a little bit of a, a sense of security there, even though there's still ways to find it. But you can you can close it off and make sure nobody can see it. Um, access VLAN. So the the nice thing about the way that the homes are built is there's not multiple VLANs created. Um, at a later time, we'll go into if you want to do more complex things. With your home network, you can, um, but for most typical things, you really don't need it, right? Um, if you just have, you know, your smart devices and your mobile devices and, you know, a few odds and ends, laptops, you probably don't need to start creating VLANs. So this will start to, to complicate that. The default VLAN in your environment is VLAN 1. So as long as you see that, you're probably safe if you haven't changed anything. Um, the service schedule I'm going to talk about, but I'm going to talk about that when we go into separate uh, Wi-Fi networks for, say, kids or things like that. So we'll talk about that a little bit later. Um, access control and radio control. Again, I'm going to go into this a little bit later because later because there's some in-depth things that you can do with it. But for right now, I don't I don't think there's a lot that I want to talk about just in the guest network. Um, and one question, I will get to all the questions in chat too as well. So Tony, I saw your question. We'll, we will get to that. And then Nick, yeah, you can do VLANs for IOT devices or internet of things. Uh, we'll, we'll go into that as well a little bit later as well. Okay. And there was actually a really good video posted probably about a year and a half ago by a user named that tech guy mm -hmm. that specifically goes through, <clears throat> sorry, uh, specifically goes through isolating out VLANs for IOT. Oh, yep. Yep. Yeah. So it's it's really good. I I do that at home, um, but that's because I'm probably tech technically paranoid. I guess we would call it. <laughs> um, so, but yeah. So we have this basically built, and this is really the the majority of what you need. You just need the guest network, your authentication type, and your encryption type, and then you're probably pretty much set here for a guest network. Then you go to the next screen and we have this piece. So social media logins, you can use Facebook, Google, LinkedIn, Microsoft, or WeChat. So typically when, when people see this, they look at it and they say, whoa, what are you taking my Facebook information? Are you data mining this? No, it's just an authentication method. That's it. It will show the session who it was that authenticated, but it doesn't collect any data from those people. So depending on the level of comfort there, um, you know, it's something that you can consider for sure. Well, and I, and let's note too that you you as the homeowner, you will see who attached to it. So you'll see their if you chose Facebook, you'll see their Facebook name, um, or yep. you will see their their Google account name. You won't get their password or any other credentials. Um, but we as Ruckus don't see any of that. Yep. You know, so it's the only you're seeing it in the UI as the homeowner. You see the username that was used to log in, and that's all the information that is you know, kept as part of that. So, yep. Yep, exactly. And truth be told, I don't think we really have any interest in that data anyways, because it doesn't do any good. I mean, the, thing, yeah, the, yeah. the things that were, the data we're really interested in as a, as a hardware manufacturer is what kind of connectivity are we getting? You know, what kind of transfer rates are we seeing? That's the things we're interested in because that yeah. helps us improve our products, who you are, what you are and what your data is. We have no interest in that. <laughs> so just to, just to clarify that. Yeah, we don't we don't sell data to uh, any advertising or anything like that. We're not a we're not a service provider. Yeah, we're more concerned with the the overall user experience and you know like error frames stuff like that. So absolutely. Yep. yep exactly. So, uh, so the enable guest pass self service you can do this. So you can create this and say the default guest guest pass lifetime is one day. 
uh, hours, weeks, you can set this up to basically say, hey, you guys have access to this network for 12 hours, right? Or six hours. As soon as you want your guests out, turn the Wi-Fi off, they'll, the kids will want to leave, right? <laughs> so you can limit that piece of it. Um, you can terminate user sessions after a period of time if you want. You can do an approval piece. So if you have people that show up, that, there are some folks that do this, um, but if you want to enable it to where you have to approve that user to attach to your guest network, you can enable that. Um, I know people do it. I know I'm usually, if you're having a get together or a gathering, you're probably busy you know, chatting, talking, whatever, you might not want to deal with that. So just be aware that's what it does. It's going to require that you approve them to log into it or to connect to it. Um, you can create validity periods. You can redirect them to URLs. Um, so if you have a, a website, let's say you're a little bit more techy and you create a website about the event that you're hosting, uh, as soon as they connect and they try to navigate to a website, it will redirect them to that website you specify. So it's pretty cool stuff you can do and you can make it pretty fancy. Uh, other things that you can really do is you can go in and modify this splash screen that they get when they are given a splash screen to log in to the guest network. So you can put your own picture up there. You can edit any of these items, the pictures, what it says. You know, you can go in and say, welcome to the Ruckus at home guest network. And so as soon as you do that, it'll replace it. So you can do all of this cool, cool little tips or tricks in here that you can trick it out a little bit for your own custom needs, right? You can preview it if you want so you can see what it looks like in full screen and then just say, okay. And I think it's created. So I'll go ahead and create it. And there it is, at home guest. So now what do we do? Well, let's connect to it. So I'm gonna show you exactly what would happen if I were to go into my Wi-Fi settings on my phone and I'm going to search for it and keep in mind we have about three million Wi-Fi networks here but the password was at home guest we'll join it uh-oh well, I can cheat because I don't remember what the password was. <laughs> <laughs> I also have very fat fingers, so that could have something to do with it. There we go. Now we're connected to it. And then the splash screen pops up and it says, hey, we're going to connect to our Wi-Fi. So one thing that I did was it was probably a little bit double redundant. So I created a password to connect to it and then the same password to connect to it again. So you could probably omit one and leave the other, um, but you just type this in again. Oh. Uh, oh, at home password, that's why. It put a space in there. Can you believe that? It did it actually. It did, yeah. There we go. <laughs> Your iPhone actually went in and <laughs> nice. Auto spell. You gotta love it. Yeah. So then once we hit continue, it just says I know it's hard to see, but it does say success. So we're connected to it. You just say done and there you go. You're on it. So I'm gonna hop back onto the other Wi Fi network for later. There we go. So that's how you do that. Uh, all right. So that's your guest network. So that really runs down how you go through and do all of that, right? Questions, confusion, concerns, anything like that? Uh, let me run through. I'm just going to make sure. It looks like you grabbed everything in chat. Is there anything that we missed? Um, I'm looking for just a little bit of a um, little bit of additional detail um, on one of them. So, okay. Um, and a question did come in says, um, 
If the API's multiple chain port, is Beacon able to transmit only on a single port or on all ports? Or is it can be configurable for a specific port? Well, a, um, a Beacon is a, a Wi-Fi component, so that, that's going to go over the air. So that's going to go over your 2.4 gigahertz or your 5 gigahertz radios, not a, a physical port. You can configure whether you use the 2.4 or the 5 gig or both. Um, so, you know, let me let me know if that's kind of what you were looking for there, because the, the the Ethernet interfaces on there, we can use one or both of those Ethernet interfaces. Uh, just one of them will take the PoE power. You know, so if you've got a Ruckus AP with with two physical Ethernet interfaces, um, one of them will be the the PoE to power the unit itself. But you can use both of those for data transmission, or you can, you know, chain that to another AP back behind it or to other devices behind it as well. So let me know if one of those two answers the question for you. Yeah. Let me know if I'm going to do that because I want to show these ports. I think this is a safe way to do that. So because of the accident itself, as multiple ports, I was just talking about right now. The POE port. Have 
I'll kill that and see if that helps the audience. I apologize. Can you hear me now? really odd, but you can hear me now. I do great through our back end constraints are perfectly the same. We can see the audio screen copy, so. That's really odd. Huh. overlay and make sure that it doesn't happen again so okay so now you're um now i'm now i'm not getting your audio through but you may have well i muted our, our the session you and i are on so it should still be coming through through the stream hopefully there how about that okay now I, now i've got your audio again so Okay, yeah, I don't know where that came from. I'm not dropping any frames, so that's 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 odd. Hmm. Okay. Okay, I am seeing people saying that the audio is better. Um Okay. Well, we okay, apologize. Okay, now they say they can hear both of us fine. So, fair yeah, enough. That's really fair odd. Enough. Um so for one of the earlier questions, um which was on, and it did sound like from the, based on the response that it was on, can you pre-configure this like through the app? Um, no, you would not be able to pre-configure it through the app. We do have other solutions that would work that way. Um, our Ruckus Cloud solution, our Smart Zone or Zone Director controllers would work that way. Um, but if you're using Unleashed specifically, Unleashed runs directly on the AP itself. So the, the app actually does not store any data about configuration of your network itself. That is all pulled in real time from the access point um, that is actually acting as the, the master for your network. So you can't like pull down the Unleashed app, pre-configure your networks and things like that. You have to have a Ruckus AP there to use the Unleashed app to do configuration of the networks in the environment. So I just, I had asked in chat if that was the question that was being asked, just to, to be able to understand what the, what the question was. So, yep. Yep, yep. Um, okay, so Nick's asking a question if there is a way to link a specific Wi-Fi network to just one AP. So for example, if he wants to broadcast just basement Wi-Fi in the basement, but not have it broadcast in any other access point, and I'm gonna go on a limb and say, yes, you can, especially in a mesh environment, um, you can turn Wi-Fi networks on and off per access point. So if you look at the access point, it'll show you here, if you go into edit, um, oh, I might, I might have misspoke. Let me look at this real quick. <laughs> We're gonna find out together, how about that? I don't think you can, I think you can only do it per radio. I'd have to look at home because I do have an Unleashed network at home and see if I can. I seem to remember that there is a way to do that, but I would have to dig and find it. And the unfortunate part, Nick, here is I don't have a mesh environment, so I don't have a way to fully test it. But I'll, I'll make you a deal. If you, yeah, Sean's saying we can, so I believe that you can actually disable it on one AP. I just can't display the demonstration for you because I don't have a mesh, so. Um, if you're curious about it, uh, one thing I would say is the, um, I think this is a command. Let me make sure. We'll see if Nightbot picks it up. We can do it on the forums and put some up there and somebody can grab some, some screenshots and throw it in there and you can make it happen. So, okay.
Yeah, if I don't have multiple APs, I don't have a way to show that you can disable one show WLAN info. Yep, I don't have a way to do it. Okay, so something I want to show you here real quick is the it's showing. So I'm looking at the access point. If you look at this, okay, and when you expand the WLAN info, it's showing four total. Okay, Ruckus at Home is up there twice. At Home Guest is up there twice. And the reason for that is because you have two different radio types with your access points. You have a 2.4 gigahertz radio and you have a five gigahertz radio, okay? And all that really means is older devices and maybe even some newer devices, depending on what it is, only support a 2.4 gigahertz radio. That's the only type of antenna or radio that's installed in that device. A great example of that is my doorbell. I have a doorbell camera and it's a 2.4 gigahertz radio, okay? So when you create a network in here, it's going to um, create those, both of those networks that are broadcast over both frequencies, basically. So depending on the device, whether it be an iPhone that's an iPhone 11 or an iPhone that's an iPhone 4 that you still have, it will attach to that network because of the radio compatibility. So that's why that happens and that's why you see it duplicated. The 802.11 BGN, that is your 2.4 gigahertz radio. A, N, and then A, C, that's your five gigahertz radio. So hopefully that clears that up because I, I have received questions on that before where there was some confusion like, hey, why is this in here twice? <laughs> so that's that's the reason for it, okay. Um, okay, so let me grab Okay, so Larry's asking, he had a power outage last week. And I'm I'm 99% sure that if I changed, I had a dual microphone set up. I think that's what was killing the um, camera piece. So Larry, when we talked about the ICX, and I think because it was, I don't understand it. I apologize. I don't know why it's doing that. Maybe it's the audio is trying to pull through on the NDI cam. I'm not sure. Hmm. It okay. may be. Um, so, yeah, well, that we'll probably have to look into that later. Yeah. Actually, if you want to go back over, if you go back over to that screen for just a second, let me check your, your audio mixer levels and let's see if there's because you've got cam there on the top i just muted the ndi cam on my phone so this should clear up the audio issues but they can they can tell us okay because um, it won't affect you and i's conversation because we're connected differently um, yeah exactly yeah but i was just gonna look at your uh, off the screen here so yep okay uh yep. so yeah everyone let us know if the audio is okay now that that additional change is made so yep yep and sorry, there's about a 30 second delay between uh, when it goes out and what you're actually seeing on the live stream. So it takes a few moments for us to get the uh, the response back. Excellent, yeah. saying it's okay. fine now. All awesome, right. thank you guys. So it was, it's just, it it's muted in the camera now. So Larry, one thing I'm gonna, I'm gonna kinda try to uh, lay out for you. You need a USB cable. And the type of USB cable you need is going to be, it's going to connect to this port right here. This is a USB-C port. This one here is a USB-A port. So you can get one of those, Fry's, Best Buy, sometimes Home Depot and Lowe's have them. Amazon has them. You can connect the USB-C cable to this guy, 
Oops. And then you can connect the other USB port to one of the USB ports on your computer. Okay. And then you can connect to the console of this device. Um, there's some great guides on how to do it. And then you can turn power back on to the device. And I'm going to show you how to do this real quick. So I'm going to, Brian, I'm going to let you take over for a second. I'm going to connect ooh, my USB port. I'm going to pull up putty and I'm just going to show you how to turn power back on on those ports. So the main thing you're really looking for is do you have power on your access point? Is the light off? Because if the light's off, there's not a power button on there. It's the, the ICX switch itself is not feeding power to the access point because that's what it does. So let me connect this up real quick. And then when I do that, I'll just pull up the console session. I'll show you kind of how to do it. And then we'll be able to go through and see it. So give me two seconds. Let me do that and I'll be right back. Okay. And while he's doing that, uh, so the earlier question when the, I think when the audio was actually cutting out, uh, there was a question on the the probes. Um, so um, we did kind of talk about that the physical, the Ethernet ports on there, both of those can be used for data, but only one will take the power over Ethernet. Um, but probes are actually, you can turn on whether you're using the 2.4 and the 5 gigahertz radio or either one of those. And your, your probes are actually a wireless signal. So those would only go out there. Those would not actually be transmitted out the, the physical or Ethernet interfaces. So I think that the answer to that may have been when we were still having audio issues earlier. So I just thought I'd hit that while Matt was grabbing his USB cable, which he has apparently done because I see it plugged <laughs> in there. So yeah. I have, yeah. So I'm gonna what I'm gonna have to do real quick is I'm gonna add I need to add in I need to kill that. I'm gonna bring putty up because we're gonna need to be able to see putty. And then one thing that I also need to be able to show you is is how to figure out which COM port it is because that's that's a challenge. So the COM port is, and Putty doesn't, Putty's not even showing up. There we go. Okay, so Putty is a, a program, you can download it for free. Uh, it'll let you connect to it. So you have different options and this is called Serial, okay? It's gonna use a COM port. And what that means is you plug your USB cable in, you plug the other end of the USB cable into say your ICX, whatever you're looking for. And then what's gonna end up happening is I've gotta show you, let me pull a different screen here. Nope, I'm just gonna to have to do Give me two seconds here. I'll do a display capture. Yeah, and also while you're grabbing that, if you know the, the IP address of your switch, or if you can look at whatever's providing DHCP there, um, you can uh, tell that over to it as long as it's in its default state with the version that they've installed uh, for Lennar. Um, so instead of having to do the USB-C connection, if you can find the, the IP address of it, you should be able to telnet um, into it. If you can't telnet into it, try an SSH client, mm -hmm. and that should be able to get you into it as well. But if you don't have the IP address, then you would need to go to using uh, the USB connection that we're showing here. So, yep. Yeah, so what I'm gonna do to figure out which COM port it is, because COM1 won't work. If you, I mean, you can try and go through one, two, three, four, five, that's a pain in the butt. So go to your My Computer icon, just right click and go to Manage. Okay. And then you go to device manager and inside device manager, you have something here called ports, com and LPT, okay. Which are some pretty old terms, <laughs> but they work. But if I expand it, the USB to serial com port is com three. Okay. So that tells me if I go here and I say, all right, I need com three and I'm going to open it, hit enter a couple times and I've logged into my 7150. And one thing I'm going to do on here as well is I'm going to go to the settings, appearance, and I'm going to change this font so that we can all see it. Okay. Okay. So we need power on the port. Okay. And my access point is plugged. It's plugged into port one by one by three. Okay. So if I do a show interface brief, 
It's going to show me all the interfaces in the ICX. And I see 113 is up. Okay, that's great. This is probably running newer software, so I don't, I'm not required to do this, but I will type this. I will type config your terminal interface one by one by three. Oops. Ethernet one by one by three. Okay. And then I'm simply going to type inline power. Okay. That turns power on on the port. And that will then turn your access points on. So technically, every single port that you have in your ICX, you can turn power on them. So if I need to turn it on on another port, I would now do, and you can abbreviate, interface E one by one by four, okay? Inline power, it's on. Now, the thing you have to keep in mind with this is, let's say I have my laptop or a, a tower, a PC tower, whatever it is, and I plug a port into that port or I plug the PC into that port that's providing power. What happens? Nothing. <laughs> it doesn't start shooting power into your device because it's not asking for power. So the switch itself, it won't hurt it. You can turn power on all those ports and make sure that they're up and running. Okay. The key with this and Larry, I think where it might've bit you is as soon as you're done with the configuration piece of it, you type end. Okay. And as soon as I type end, let me move this over so you can see. I'm going to type write memory, okay? That's going to save my configuration to flash. So if I reboot this switch now, tomorrow, in a month, if I take a power hit, when it comes back up, that power configuration is going to be here on that port one by one by three, okay? It won't show up on here because there's no, there's no configuration on the port. But it will show up, it will stay, and you'll be good to go. Okay. Another little trick you can do if you want in the ICX is, hey, let's say I know which access point that is. I'm going to do config T, interface E, one by one by three. I want to give it a name so that when I log into it next time, I know, oh, this is the main floor access point. Okay. You type port, whoops, hyphen name. I can't type today. And then uh, main floor AP. Done. Okay. Now when I do a show run or write terminal and I see it, interface E113, port name, main floor access point. So I can always find it if I need to. It won't hide from me, okay? And if you've, if you've configured it to allow access to the, the web GUI, you can do all this through the web GUI of the 7150 as well, and you will see those names appearing also in the web GUI. So, yep. yep. And you can turn on and off POE, all that kind of stuff, in the web UI for the 7150. So exactly. um, you might... If you've lost, if, if you've basically lost your brains because of the power outage, you may need to get back into the 7150 and set it back up to be able to get to the web UI. But once you've done that, you can do it all through the web. So if you're not as comfortable with the, the command line interface, once you've got your way into the web UI, it can be a lot friendlier and easier to go and turn on power and do all those kind of things there. So, yep. Yeah, yep, exactly. And so Larry, I know I just threw a lot of information at you. Um, one thing, this session is recorded, so here on our YouTube channel, it mm -hmm. will show up. There is a live stream playlist. You can go back and look through. It's at about the probably the 40-minute mark. Uh, you can pull it up, and you can see all the commands. It'll run through all of it, and, and you'll be set at that point. So, okay. Awesome. All right, so let's go back to some AP stuff. So, Brian, we talked about kids, right? I mean, you have yeah. kids in the house or... Maybe you have a roommate that drives you nuts and you have the username and password to your <laughs> Unleashed network mm -hmm. and you want to control things, okay? And the yeah. main reason I look at this, I do this at home, is kids need to be in bed at a certain time. Well, that's kind of hard to, to do if they have an Xbox or an iPad that's up and running with internet access to it. So the best solution I can think of to tell you for that is let's create a separate wireless LAN that is specifically for the kids. And then I'll show you how to set timing access controls. So the wireless network will stay on from a certain point in the morning until a certain point at night, and then it shuts off. And when it shuts off, it disconnects those clients so they don't have any more internet access, okay? So let's do this. We're gonna go into Wi-Fi networks here, okay? Just click on it. 
and we'll go to create. In fact, you know what I think I'm gonna do? I'm gonna create this in the mobile app because that's a really easy way to do it. And I think that's sure, the way not, a lot of gives people- Gives a good show of both. Yeah. yeah. Um, problem is I have to reconnect my phone. <laughs> so give me two seconds to do that real quick. Okay, back up and running. So we're gonna go back into the iPhone and we're gonna go into our Unleashed app. So if you don't have the app, you can download it from the App Store, Google Play Store. It works both Google and iPhone, okay? So we're gonna go into the app and we're just gonna log in. Super simple password that I set up, okay? And we see we have total of two WLANs here, okay? We'll just hit the plus sign. And we're gonna create one. So you have options, you could do standard, guest like we did earlier, anything here, right? So we're gonna do WPA2, WPA3, cause that's the encryption that we want there, right? Mm -hmm. And then we'll call it at home, oops. Oh my goodness, I can't type on this thing. At home kids, okay. And then PSK, oh wait, I, I need standard, that's different. Okay, at home kids, standard Wi-Fi network, right? And then we're gonna give it a simple password. We'll just call it at home kids, make it simple, okay? And then you can do all of these different things. You can turn on different radio types if you want or turn them off. I wouldn't recommend doing it. It's, uh, they're kind of necessary and needed, okay? So we'll leave it there and we'll just hit done. And then we'll go down here and tap on done. It's created. Uh, yep. Okay. So we have it. We have at home kids. Okay. Now we need to set this up to where it turns off at night. Okay. I'm going to throw myself under a bus and tell you right now that I prefer to do this in the web UI because my hands are not, I just, like I said, I have fat fingers. So this becomes a little bit more difficult for me, but it's the service schedule. So right now it says always on. So it's on 24 by seven all the time. Well, we're gonna set it to custom, okay? And just apply that. Now we see this nice little graph and it says, oh, we can set this to be on and off at certain times. So let's change it and do it from, whoa, around 7 a.m on Monday until bedtime is, uh, we'll say they go to bed at 10. Okay, and you just set these bars. Okay. And this works really slick. We, uh, my wife and I love this feature because it gets used every single day. <laughs> but let's say on, on Friday nights and Saturday nights, eh, you know what, they can stay up until midnight. So we'll let them do that. And then Sunday, we go back to the normal 10 o'clock schedule. It's there, it's set, okay? Now you just tap on done. And you have a, a custom schedule built, okay? Pretty slick. Really good feature, so you can control that and you're good to go, okay? Now there's one other thing, especially when it comes to having a little bit more of granular control over your Wi-Fi network, what it's doing, what's allowed, what's not allowed. You can filter websites, okay? So if, you know, if you're anything like me and you wanna pick on somebody and say, hey, you're shopping on Amazon too much, we're gonna block that website, <laughs> you could do that. Um, and you can use this to your discretion, whatever you feel is necessary. Um, you can try and do whatever really you want with it, but what you can do is if you go into admin and services, okay, and I think it was under administration. Nope, it's not, it's under services, okay. You have this application recognition and control. This is gonna show you kind of a graph of what's going on for the last hour, the last 24 hours. It'll tell you what kind of traffic is going through your network. So you can kind of see what, what's going on, what people are looking at, what devices they're using, that kind of thing, okay? But you can also use this thing called a application policy, okay? And what we did is we decided to block a website called Movies123. And it's just a way that, if you're familiar with what Pirate Bay is, Pirate Bay was a way for 
downloading of content like movies and things like that that yeah you know you probably shouldn't be doing oh you're right i'm not sure on my dashboard i apologize got to hit the right button so i'll go back down through this you go to admin and services here on the bottom then you go to the services drop down you go to application and recognition control you have the application overview and here you can see like i said you can see what types of applications are being used what websites are being used the the IP addresses of clients. You can also see the client types, right? So you can see that it's a Windows laptop. You can see that this is an iOS iPhone, things like that. You can go to application policy here and you can block content. So you can basically filter this and say, all right, uh, Google, we'll, we'll call it a Google test. Okay. And then we're going to create a new rule and we're going to say, all right, it's a denial rule. We want to deny it. And then we're going to call it as, uh, what did we use? Application name based. So we'll go over here and we'll call it Google dot star. Now the star is key. So in the computer and networking world, a star or an asterisk means any. So it's a wild card. It matches on dot com, dot net, dot org, dot edu. It'll match on all of it. Okay. So it doesn't matter what we put in there. And then we'll just click save. Okay. And so then once we click save, oh, wait a minute, why did this work yesterday? And now it decides it doesn't want to work. Oh, okay. <laughs> so we'll call it google.com. Okay. Oh, you didn't add the rule, I think. How did I not add the rule? Oh. Gotta save. The save up top, yeah, That's yeah. Cool. So I think I think Google Star would have worked, but you just have to hit the save on the rule line. So, yeah. <laughs> oh goodness. Okay, so do this. Now I'm gonna hop back over to this view, and I will go to Google.com, and it loads. You got to be kidding me. Uh, did you set the rule as HTTP or? Mm -mm. I did it the same way we did the movies one yesterday. Application name based. Oh, that's why. Hold on. Uh, and are you, is that the network you're connected to is also there? Oh, fair point. No, I'm connected to Ruckus at Home. Did you do that in Ruckus at Home or Ruckus at Home Kids? Oh, that's a good question. Um, these should be... Oh, it has to be applied. Good point. Uh, edit. Advanced options. Access control. You have to go into the Wi-Fi network and... And you might want to shift back over that screen to show them where to apply that. So, yeah. So once you create the application policy, you go into your network, you edit it, you go to your advanced options, you go to access control, you go down to apply group policy, and I'm just going to go down and select the Google test one, and I'm going to say, okay. So now when I go to the iPhone session and I refresh this, even though you can see, let me do this a different way. So I'll load the Apple website. Okay. And then I'm going to go back and I'm going to try and load Google. And you see how the bar is stuck? It's because it's filtered that and it's not going to let me reach that website. Okay. So if you really wanted to, you could go into admin and services again. Go back to the right screen. You can go into your application policy. You can edit this. You can create multiple lines in here. So if you wanted to block Google, YouTube, Amazon, any site that you choose, you can block all of those sites in there and then apply it to whichever wireless network you wanted to apply it to, and you're good to go. Okay. Uh, let's see. One more thing I want to show you, and then, Brian, we're going to do some Q&A between us. 
um, if we go into administration, okay, and you go to upgrade, okay, you can upgrade your access point right here. It's the easiest upgrade on the planet when it comes to this stuff. I mean, you can do it manually. You can go find the software, download it, go through it. But all you really need to do is go to this option and you can go down and drop to drop down down here. You can select this and then you can click on upgrade. Okay. What this will do is it will reboot everything once it's loaded and it's done. Um, it's super slick to do. And, and note, you only have to do it from one AP. It will do it for the whole yes. network. Yes, so, yep. great point. So yep. even if you have two or three access points in your house in a mesh, you do this, it upgrades all three of them. So you do the whole system. One thing I'd recommend is, especially if you have a Wi-Fi network set up to turn off at 10 o'clock, unless you want um, mm -hmm. people to come into the room and scream at you, <laughs> I would recommend you do this later at night or early in the morning. It does reboot. It does take a little bit of time. Um, I usually plan for, you know, 20, 30 minutes just to be on the safe side. It's super slick. It's super easy. Once you upgrade it, you're done. It just runs and you're good to go. Okay. All right. We covered a lot of stuff. A lot of stuff. We had some Absolutely. audio issues. We, yep. uh, <laughs> we had a presenter that forgot to hit the right button <laughs> to switch scenes. <laughs> um, but I want to make sure we cover all of your questions because it's important. And um, Brian, I know just talking through some of this stuff too, are there, are there questions you have? Are there things you feel like we also need to talk about and cover as well? And sorry, I was, I was scrolling back through the, uh, I was scrolling back through the questions. So sorry, could you repeat that? Oh, no worries. Um, <laughs> I'm being a horrible person. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's fine. Tony just asked a question about, um, if he thinks that, uh, the, the Wi-Fi, the Xfinity modem took over. So something I would recommend if you, if you have a, whether it be Xfinity, whether it be any of the um, DSL providers out there, the modem or the router that they're going to give you or provide you is going to have Wi-Fi in that device and it's going to be turned on. And something I would recommend is they usually send you instructions on how to log into it, how to change your Wi-Fi name, things like that. In the Xfinity device, in the DSL modem, I would recommend that you log into it and you disable the Wi-Fi in that device mm -hmm. because you don't need all of that excess radio noise, especially when it's two separate uh, you know, Wi-Fi networks being broadcast. I would recommend doing that just because it, yeah. you, you don't need it. It's extra noise and it's simple. And in it's case simple. it did actually give you the same network name and the same passcode in case someone had just set both of them up the same way, which, you know, whoever did the initial configuration might have done that. You can get some really strange behavior, especially if you use a provider like T-Mobile or AT&T that has, you know, voice over IP that you can do voice over Wi-Fi on your cell phone. When it switches between those two networks, it's not going to recognize that as the same origin network and it's going to drop the call and you're going to have a lot of other unusual behavior. So absolutely. Yeah. Yep. Yep. Thor's asking about NAT and the ICX and Thor, I'm going to admit we do not support NAT in the ICX yep. today. And I don't know if it's on a roadmap or planned, so I don't have the ability to answer that um, in any way other than we don't support it right now. The, uh, there was a mention of they have the unleashed app installed and it doesn't pull up the, the page that we were displaying. You have to be attached to your unleashed Wi-Fi network at home for the app to load. If it's not an unleashed network, the app won't load. And in fact, it'll pop up a message and tell you you're not connected to an unleashed network. So double check that, make sure that you're not connected to, like we talked about the Xfinity network or the old Wi-Fi network that's in your house and you haven't flipped over to your new Unleashed network, something like that. You just have to make sure that you're on that on that network itself. Okay. And another one, make sure you're not on a VPN as well. Um, right. If you are on a VPN and it's not, and this gets in depth, but it's not what's called a split tunnel VPN, yeah. then everything you're doing goes directly through that VPN and doesn't actually talk to your own home network. Um, so that would keep you from getting to it and talking to it. So um, check for that as well. And that can be in like stuff like parental control apps, things like that may, you know, push everything through a VPN on the back end to track, you know, like the children's behavior. So there, there are 
a lot of other things that will just automatically run a VPN off the back, both for mobile devices as well as for Windows. So definitely uh, check that as well. And Nick has an excellent question as well. I'm mm -hmm. um, asking if there's plans to expand the configuration capability for ICX into the Unleashed dashboard. Um, so like would ICX get folded into Unleashed um, at some stage? Um, and Matt, unless you've heard anything, there's nothing that I've heard with that, um, that it has folded into what we call a Ruckus cloud environment. It's folded into some of our other controller environments, but I've not heard anything about that folding into Unleashed. I would, personally, I would love to see that myself because I would love to see the ICX act as the Unleashed root, you know, because that ICX would kind of always be up and the APs connected out to it. Um, so I would love to see that functionality, but it's not something I've heard um, discussed as a future feature or something that's being looked at right now. So. Yeah, and we haven't heard discussions about it, but I'm pretty sure it's been brought up based on, I mean, look, our user base, the community is amazing and we get awesome feedback from everybody. And internally, we provide a lot of feedback as well. So there's always times where we're saying, hey, we kind of have a need for some of this stuff. And, you know, one of the things about, you know, I guess it's a nice thing about this, but a, the biggest thing is software continually evolves, right? So you have new releases that continue mm -hmm. to come out. And all of this stuff will be taken into consideration. I'm sure there's a lot of things on a whiteboard right now in a conference room <laughs> surrounding software engineering where they're looking at a lot of this stuff. So I would expect to see this stuff kind of come up at a certain point. Uh, because yes, we uh, internally as well, we would love to see NAT support. Uh, we would love to see a lot of this stuff uh, built into it. So, and I, I'd have to check. There was some stuff within Unleashed version two hundred point eight, mm -hmm. and I think there were some tie-ons. So and there's some very basics. Yeah, yeah. And, and there's yeah. challenges with that too, right? Because you have mm -hmm. to the ICX has to be running the right version of software. Unleashed network has to be running the right version of software. So that's something that we really have to take into consideration and look at because you have to start uprevving all of these different environments. Um, yeah. So when we get to that point, we will certainly put some content together, throw it on YouTube and show everybody how to go about doing that, um, especially if it's something you can take great advantage of, right? And uh, Tony, and I totally understand you saying you hesitate to turn off the XFi until you can get back in the app. Absolutely. And I would say um, we've got great support teams around the globe and they will be really happy and that will be working with you individually to, to kind of go through and diagnose what's going on. And, you know, they'd be much more suited than a, than doing it in a public environment like this. They'd be much better at kind of tracking down exactly what's going on and best next steps. So, yep. Yeah, Tony, I'm, I'm going to throw, Nightbot's going to spit out a link like it, it did just now in chat. There mm -hmm. is a playlist on there. It will show you how to reset your access points if you need to, so that you can go in and you can reset the admin username and password and also reset the wireless network name and the wireless password for it. So keep in mind there's, I'm not saying you're confused, but I'm just saying there's, there's sometimes confusion over the username and password piece, right? So there's a username that allows you to log into the Unleashed environment that you have here. So it's admin and then whatever password, and you can see the admin username right here. And then you also have your wireless LAN or WLAN or SSID. That's your wireless network that's being broadcast throughout your house. And when you attach to that, it has a password that it requires for you to attach to that as well. One thing I always recommend is if you do go in and reset your access point, it's pretty simple to do. But if you go in and do that, I always suggest set your W, at least your main WLAN name and WLAN password to be the same thing that it was before, because all of your clients that are connecting to that wireless network will just automatically reconnect. You don't have to go in and touch 10 devices within your house and put the passwords back in everything. They just come back up. It's pretty seamless. So it's a pretty simple thing to do. You can do it either with the web UI that we're looking at here, you can do it through the mobile app. It's pretty slick. So you can you can definitely go in and do that, okay? All right, man, we covered a lot of stuff. I can't thank you guys enough for joining. Um, we do have forums, take part in the forums. We have tons of YouTube content. I just linked it there. And one thing we also kind of mentioned is we're going to be doing these live streams on different topics and we're going to do them every other Wednesday. So the next one will be July 22nd. I'd love to tell you the topic, but we haven't discussed that yet because we were working very hard to get ready for this one. So I, I'm looking really forward to doing those and doing this on a normal uh, basis because it's a lot of fun. It gets a lot of information out. 
everybody participating makes it a ton of fun. And uh, we can't thank you enough for joining. Thank you, guys. Thanks, everybody, and have a great day. Yeah, thanks, guys. Appreciate it, and uh, we'll talk to everybody soon. Thanks.